Welcome to Scoring Student Work for the Grade 5 Science Measurements of Student Progress. The focus of this video is to provide guidance for scoring student short answer responses using rubrics. We will review one scenario, an associated item, and several student responses to that item. In this video, we will take a close look at the relationship between a scoring rubric and student responses for a short answer question. I will demonstrate the scoring process with three student responses for a conclusion question. You will then review other student responses in the same way. The goal is to determine the score, 2, 1, or 0, for each student response. You should have on hand the Around the Bend scenario, a copy of the conclusion question, the rubric for the question, and the student responses for the question. This packet of handouts is available on the OSPI webpage next to this video file. This scenario around the bend and additional associated questions can be found in the 2012 Updates for Grade 5 document. A link to that document will be shown at the end of this video. Please refer to these documents throughout the presentation. You may find it helpful to take notes or mark up or highlight your copies. If you have not already done so, please pause the video and take a few minutes to read the around the bend scenario and the conclusion question and write a response to the question. Please do not read the rubric until after you've written your response. When you are finished, continue to view the rest of this video. Let's begin with the review of this scenario. This inquiry scenario describes a controlled experiment in an Earth system. Inquiry scenarios can be either controlled experiments or field studies. This happens to be a controlled experiment. A short paragraph introduces the experiment on the first page. The experimental question and the prediction include the changed and measured variables also known as the manipulated and responding variables. A list of materials is given as well as a labeled diagram to show how the experiment is set up. The second page provides a procedure with the steps needed to carry out the experiment and a data table with results. The number of bends versus height of sand data table will be used as we answer the conclusion question, so let's take a closer look. The first column is for the changed variable, which is the number of bends in the stream model. There are three conditions of the changed or manipulated variable. The lowest condition is zero bends, the middle condition is one bend, and the highest condition is two bends. The rest of the columns are for the measured or responding variable, which is the height of the sand. There are three columns of trial data and then an average column. The numbers in the data cells are the measurements Tia and Mike recorded as they did the experiment. The trial one data was recorded at the end of step five in the procedure, and the trial 2 and 3 data was recorded as part of step 6. The average data was calculated as part of step 7. Please note that the highest average measured re or responding variable data, 24 millimeters, is for the lowest condition of the change or manipulated variable, zero bends. During actual scoring of the MSP, we see many student responses that refer to the data in the average column by saying that 24 is the highest condition and that 12 is the lowest condition, which is incorrect and may result in the response not earning full credit. The fact that the lowest condition is the zero bends, the middle condition is one bend, and the highest condition is two bends will come into play when we look at the rubric. Now let's look at the conclusion question itself. The question reads, write a conclusion for this experiment. In your conclusion, be sure to answer the experimental question, Include supporting data from the number of bends versus height of sand table. Explain how these data support your conclusion. Then the experimental question is repeated for the test taker inside the answer box for paper tests and just above the answer box for online tests. Question, what is the effect of different numbers of bends in the stream model on the amount of sand that washes away? Then the word conclusion shows where to start writing a conclusion for the experiment given in the scenario. If you are working in a group, this would be a good time to pause the video and compare your responses. Now let's look at the rubric. Each short answer question rubric begins with the performance description. The performance description includes the content standard from the Washington State 2009 K-12 Science Learning Standards. The content standards describe what students are expected to know. The content standard INQG reads, scientific explanations emphasize evidence, have logically consistent arguments, and use known scientific principles, models, and theories. The performance description also includes the item specification. The item specification specifies the knowledge and abilities that are to be assessed by the question. INQG item specification 1 reads, generate a conclusion for a scientific investigation, including supporting data, 
given a description of and the results from the investigation. Links to the Washington State 2009 K-12 Science Learning Standards and the Grade 5 Tests and Item Specifications documents can be found at the end of this video. Next, there is some text that gives an example of a student response that would earn full credit. Note that whenever the rubric is quoting possible student responses, that text is shown in italics or slanted text. The conclusion question is scored using a set of attributes that responses can earn one by one, and those attributes are grouped together to decide how many score points a response earns. There are four total attributes that can be earned on this question. Three to four attributes earn two score points, two attributes earn one score point, and zero to one attributes earn zero score points. It is important to note that the example student response is just one example of the many ways students could write their response to earn the attributes. The rubric, as well as annotated student responses in a full training set, are used to guide scores in the actual scoring of student responses. This first page of the conclusion rubric also has a copy of the data table. The second page of the rubric is quite detailed. If you have not yet read through it, please pause the video now and read all of page two, then resume the video. There are a few important things to note on this page. First, this page is broken out into four sections, with each part explaining one of the attributes. Three of those sections are on the screen. The sentences from the example response on page one are put with the attribute they would earn on page two. Two of the sections include what are called attribute notes, which are further clarifications about how the attribute can be earned and how that attribute might impact the other attributes. For example, Conclusive statement attribute note number two explains that if the student writes an incorrect conclusive statement, they cannot earn any attributes, even if they correctly quote information from the data table. This would go into effect if a student said something like, the stream with the most bends had the most amount of sand washed away. Even if the response went on to say that zero bends had 24 millimeters of sand and two bends had 12 millimeters of sand, the response earns zero attributes, which turns into zero score points. The second thing to notice is this bold section in the middle about the supporting data. This is where an understanding of the conditions of the manipulated variable is important. The first thing we have to determine is if the manipulated variable is expressed as quantitative data or as descriptive data. Since the conditions in this experiment are the numbers 0, 1, and 2, we have quantitative data for this item. As a result of that, the minimum data that must be reported in this item is the data for zero bends, the lowest condition, and the data for two bends, the highest condition. If the data for one bend had been higher than 24 millimeters, we would have had a curved data set where the middle condition had the highest responding variable data. This paragraph clarifies that even if the data set is curved, the zero bend and two bend data is what earns the two data attributes. Any discussion about the one bend data would contribute to the conclusive statement and or the explanatory language attribute. If the manipulated variable had been descriptive with something like hot, warm, cold, or red, green, blue as the conditions in the first column, then the student would just pick the highest and lowest values for the responding variable and discuss those conditions to earn the data attributes. The bottom part of the page is about the explanatory language attribute. There are many different ways that responses can earn this attribute and many attribute notes to consider. The first thing scorers look for is if attribute note number one is fulfilled. Does the response have a numeric value in it? In conclusion items where the manipulated variable values are quantitative, we often find the numeric value in a conclusive statement that says something like, the two bends had the least hand washed away. In the example that's been used in this rubric, the conclusive statement does not have a numeric value, so we have to look to the second and third sentences which address the data to fulfill this. Our example has 2, 12, and 24 in it, so the response qualifies to earn the explanatory language attribute. The second thing that scorers usually look for is if attribute note number four has happened. Did the response give the wrong data for the middle condition of the manipulated variable? Since we don't have a curved data set here, the data for the middle condition of one bend does not have to be included in the response. But if a response does include data for one bend, it must be correct. If that data is not correct, then the response cannot earn the explanatory language attribute. If the data is correct, then the scorer can continue looking for explanatory language. 
The most common explanatory language we see in responses are actually like the example in attribute note number three, which uses the word greatest to describe the amount of sand washed away in the stream with no bends. Descriptive words that end in st like greatest, least, most, tallest, shortest, or lowest are all comparison words that cover the whole range of conditions and could help a response earn this attribute. One word that does not work in this situation is best because it is an opinion word. Words that end in er like lower, shorter, and taller can be problematic because on their own they do not cover the whole range of conditions. They just compare two conditions. If a response uses an er word, we have to look to see if there is a series of er words to earn this attribute. An example of this would be if a student said the zero bend's height of sand was taller than one bend, which was taller than the two bend's height. And a word that never works in this situation is better because it is both an opinion word and only compares two things. These types of statements are noted as vague and would not earn any credit. Attribute notes two, five, and six oftentimes interact with one another. A student might say something like, zero bends had the most sand, however two bends had the least sand. Zero bends had 24 millimeters and two bends had 12 millimeters. Therefore, I know that zero bends had the most sand. In this case, the zero bends had the most sand in the first sentence would be credited for the conclusive statement. The response qualifies to earn the explanatory language because of the numbers in the sentence about the data. When we look at the third sentence, we have to ignore, therefore, I know that, as stated in note five. So all we have left is zero bends had the most sand, which sounds exactly like the part of the first sentence that earned the conclusive statement. Note two says that we cannot credit a copy of the conclusive statement, so we cannot use the third sentence. At this point, we look at the first sentence again, which note six says can be read as two separate sentences. We'd ignore the word however, as note five directs, and are left with two bends had the least sand, which does earn the explanatory language attribute. An example of a rephrase statement, as mentioned in note two, would be if the first sentence said something like, zero bends had the most sand, and then at the end of the response there was a sentence like, zero bends had the highest amount of sand. At the fifth grade level, this is an acceptable rephrase, but we would expect more of older students. The third page of the rubric also has a lot of information in it. If you have not yet read through it, please pause the video now and read all of page three, then resume the video. This page has general notes, which also have to be considered. General note one is pretty straightforward, so I won't go into details on it. The start of general note two is very important. It states, responses must give the precise numerical values or precise descriptive language from the data table for both the manipulated and responding variables. In practice, that means that responses must clearly tie the responding variable data to the manipulated variable. A response that says something like, the highest data was 24 millimeters and the lowest data was 12 millimeters, cannot earn the data attributes because there was no connection back to the conditions of the manipulated variable. The scorer doesn't know for sure which measurement is tied to which number of bends in the student's mind, so the data attributes cannot be earned. Note 2E is very specific to each item and is a decision initially made by teachers during pilot range finding while looking at actual student responses. While the term zero bends is a quantitative description of the condition, teachers decided that students might use descriptive language like straight to mean the same thing. In this way, the rubric is supportive of the developing language skills of students. If you are using this templated rubric with a different item in your classroom or for something like a science fair, you would need to look at actual student work to determine what other language might be acceptable. General note three is a note that helps one sentence earn a lot of attributes. The response first has to have a creditable, separate, conclusive statement to be eligible for this note to apply. In the example given, we can see the conditions of the manipulated variable in the phrase adding two bends, and then the responding variable in information in the phrase only half as much sand washed away. This sentence would earn both the supporting data attributes and the explanatory language attribute for just this one sentence. Note 3b is another decision made by teachers during pilot range finding. We look at the data table and think about how difficult the subtraction would be for students. In this case, 24 minus 12 is a very simple subtraction problem with no regrouping needed. So the committee decided that no errors would be allowed. If errors are allowed, they'd be listed in the parentheses. 
If a student decides to use derived data, sh they should check their work carefully. One final thought about derived data. Simply putting a subtraction problem like 24 minus 12 equals 12 down on the page does not guarantee that the response will earn the supporting data and explanatory language attributes. There need to be words in the response to connect the numbers to the conditions of the manipulated variable and to the conclusive statement. The last note about this page is about general note number four. Most conclusion rubrics do not include a general note four. This was added by the committee of teachers during pilot range finding when they were looking at student responses. They noticed that students were referring to the amounts of erosion and other variations of the word erosion to describe what was happening in the model streams, even though erosion wasn't in the data table or the experimental question. After determining that this was an accurate use of the term to describe the amount of sand washed away, they added this note to clarify for scoring. Now let's look at the student responses. Response A reads as follows. The effect of the number of bends in a stream model on the amount of sand that washes away is that the more bends there are, the less amount of sand is washed away. This shows when the tray with two bends only had an average of 12 milliliters wash away, and the one with one bend only had an average of 18 milliliters wash away, and when the tray with zero bends had an average of 24 milliliters wash away, making the tray with the most bends have the least amount of sand wash away as shown above, and the tray with the least amount of bends have the most sand wash away as shown above. Response A earns two points. As I talk about how the responses are scored, the attributes will be lifted on the left side and I'll use the same colors to circle the part of the response which earns the attribute. The conclusive statement is, the more bends there are, the less amount of sand is washed away, located near the beginning of the response. The supporting data for zero bends is zero bends had an average of 24 milliliters. General note 2D says that units are not necessary for credit, so we can ignore the fact that the student used milliliters instead of the correct term millimeters. It might matter on the math test, but not on the science MSP. The supporting data for two bends was earlier in the response and said two bends only had an average of 12 milliliters. To look for explanatory language, first we need to verify that there are numerical values in the response. A quick glance tells us that there are lots of numbers in this one, so we are good. Then, since this student included the one bend data, we need to verify that they gave us the correct data, and they did say an average of 18, so we are good there too. So we can now look for the explanatory language. This response actually has two different statements that qualify as explanatory language. The first is, the most bends have the least amount of sand wash away. The second time is the phrase, least amount of bends have the most sand wash away. Either of these would earn the explanatory language attribute. These two statements are inverses of each other, so if the conclusive statement had been vague at the beginning of the response or missing, then one of them could have been used as the conclusive statement and the other would have remained to be the explanatory language. This student response earns all four of the attributes and that converts to two score points. For shorthand, we sometimes say that this paper is a four for a two. Now let's look at response B. The student wrote, yes, the number of bends in a stream affects the amount of sand that washes away. The average amount of sand in the jar was 24 millimeters tall with no bends and 12 millimeters with two bends. This shows that the amount of bends in a stream affects the amount of erosion or the amount of sand washed away. The student attempted a conclusive statement by writing, the number of bends in a stream affects the amount of sand that washes away. But since they did not give us a specific effect, this statement is vague and the attribute cannot be earned. But conclusive statement attribute note number one says that we can look for the other attributes. The statement 24 millimeters tall with no bends earns the supporting data for zero bends. And 12 millimeters with two bends earns the supporting data for two bends. The one bend data was not included in this response, so we don't need to check it. These sentences also gave us our numerical values, so now we can look for explanatory language. The last sentence is the only place left to look for the explanatory language. The sentence reads, this shows that the amount of bends in a stream affects the amount of erosion or the amount of sand washed away. This statement is another vague statement that doesn't say much more than the first sentence, so this sentence can't earn the explanatory language attribute. Overall, this response earns two attributes which converts to one score point. For shorthand, we would say that this paper is a two for a one.
Response C reads, the more bends there is, the less sand will get in the jar. The less bends there is, the more sand will get in the jar. The first sentence answers the experimental question, so it earns the conclusive statement attribute. There is no mention of the data from the data table, so the supporting data attributes cannot be earned. The last sentence, the less bends there is, the more sand will get in the jar, is the inverse of the first and looks like a great candidate for explanatory language, but there are no numeric values in the response, so attribute note number one says that we can't credit the last sentence for explanatory language. Therefore, this response earns just one attribute which converts to zero score points. For shorthand, we would say that this paper is a one for a zero. At this time, please pause the video and read through the rest of the student responses. Look for the conclusive statement first, and then look for the other attributes. Use the rubric and your notes about responses A, B, and C as a guide to assign each sample student response a score, and then return to the video. Welcome back. First, let's check the answers. If you're working in a group, take some time to compare your decisions. Then let's look at the responses to see how each paper was scored. Response D earns one score point. The first sentence is a vague conclusive statement because of the vague word best. So this doesn't earn the conclusive statement attribute, but note number one says we can look for other attributes. The second sentence earns both of the supporting data attributes. Because there are numerical values in the response and because the data for one bends is correct with 18 millimeters, we can look for explanatory language, but we don't find any comparative language. In fact, the last sentence doesn't really tell us anything, so this response only earns two of the attributes, which is a score point of one. Response E earns zero score points. The first thing we are looking for is a conclusive statement. This response is explaining what happened as the water went through the different stream tables, but does not declare which stream table or number of bends had the highest or lowest amount of sand washed away. This response does not have a conclusive statement. As a result of that, conclusive statement attribute note number two applies and none of the other attributes can be earned. This response earns zero score points. Response F also earns zero score points. The first part of the first sentence answers the experimental question, so it does earn the conclusive statement attribute. There is no mention of data from the table, so the supporting attributes cannot be earned. Explanatory language attribute notes number six says the compound sentence can be read as two separate sentences. So we could look at the end of the first sentence, the fewer bends you have, the more sand washes up. But there are no numeric values in the response, so attribute note number one says we can't credit this explanatory language. This response is a one for a zero and is a fairly typical response that earns no score points for students. Response G earns two score points. In the first sentence, the answer to the question is that the more bends there are, the less sand there will be, is a creditable conclusive statement. The second sentence earns the supporting data for zero bends. Then a few sentences later, we have the supporting data for two bends. Because there are numerical values in the response, and because the data for one bend is correct, we can look for the explanatory language. The last sentence, the less bend in a river, the more sand there will be, is a correct inverse of the conclusive statement, not a copy, so it can be credited for explanatory language. This response also has a great example of derived data. This student subtracted the lowest amount of sand from the highest amount of sand and was able to explain that the zero bends model had 12 millimeters more sand than the two bend model. Either of these sentences earned the explanatory language attribute. As a result, this is a four for a two. Response H also earns two score points. The conclusive statement doesn't appear until the third sentence. The less bends you have, the more erosion occurs. The second sentence has the supporting data for zero bends. The first sentence had the supporting data for two bends. Because there are numerical values in the response and because the data for one bend is correct, we can look for explanatory language in the rest of the response. The last phrase, height of the sand was tallest with zero bends, has one of those EST comparative words with tallest, so it is comparing the whole range of the responding variable and according to attribute note number three can be credited for explanatory language. We have another four for a two. Response I earns zero score points. The first sentence gives us an attempt at a conclusive statement, but the student is wrong. The more bend, the more sand? 
As a result of that, note number two applies and none of the other attributes can be earned. The data for zero bends is correct and the student even found some derived data, but conclusive statement attribute note number two cancels out all of that and the response earns zero score points. As a side note, let's look at the third sentence. The lowest was 12 millimeters. This is an example of the student giving us the lowest number from the data table, but not connecting it to a specific condition of the manipulated variable. Even if the conclusive statement had been correct, this response would not have earned the two bends data attribute. Response J earns two score points. The first sentence is an introduction that doesn't give us any new information. We have to go all the way to the last sentence to find a conclusive statement. The stream with no bends took the largest amount of sand away. Notice that the student used an ST word, largest, so we know that they were comparing across all the conditions. The supporting data for zero bends was back in the second sentence. The supporting data for two bends was in the fourth sentence. We have numerical values and the data for one bend is correct, so we can look for explanatory language. Remember that we can't use the sentence that is already credited for the conclusive statement. There is no derived data and no other comparative language, so this response does not have any explanatory language. This response is a 3 for a 2 and is a very common way that students earn two score points on conclusion items. This ends our review of the student responses and the scoring training. We hope this has clarified how the conclusion rubric is applied to student responses. Here are the links to the assessment documents mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. If you have any questions or comments concerning the Biology EOC, please contact Don Cope, Secondary Science Assessment Specialist, at 360-725-4989 or email don.cope at k12.wa.us. If you have any questions or comments concerning the 5th grade MSP or this training module, please contact me, Kara Todd, Elementary Science Assessment Specialist, at 360-725-4989 four nine seven nine or email Kara dot Todd at K one two dot wa dot US. Thank you for your participation.